Tyler Gaglione. Because come on, we can't ignore that second A. It's not getting any love, and you got that Italian heritage, right? I love it. That was great. <laughs> it's sort of like I practiced the accent with friends at fire. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it rolls right off the tongue for you. That's oh, good. thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. But uh, you are fresh off uh, a, a hot day of riding at Keeneland yet again. Three out of uh, seven races. Uh, pretty nice percentage. You're leading the jockey tally there. You're ahead by, I believe you said, 10. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. I, I don't know who's going to catch you right now. I should say we are recording this on the 21st. Uh, so we'll see how this rolls. Um, but big things ahead for you and things have been going supremely well for you in your jockey career. You're a, your son of a jockey um, and you really came on the scene running 2015 outstanding apprentice jockey. Got to love the Eclipse Awards, right? Get to dress up. <laughs> but I mean, were you expecting to have such success so early on? Uh, you know, I, I was really just put in a good spot from the beginning. Um, I walked on the backside of Gulfstream Park and I met my then agent, uh, Walter Blum. And it was just great for me at that time because I was very shy and, um, you know, I'm, I was young and immature. Didn't really know much about the business, but uh, he kind of helped me along and uh, he was very outgoing so he was great for introducing me to trainers and getting me in some barns and uh, he kind of just got my confidence up he always pumped me up and great guy but i i got hooked up with ralph nix and from there i mean it just started to climb and uh, just a lot of luck along the way really wow you jumped right in the frying pan gulfstream park <laughs> So, so was it, you've got all these great jockeys riding there. What was the tutelage that you were getting in the jocks room? Like uh, it was amazing. So I actually started in September. Um, it was the fall meet right before we go to Calder. That's when we were running at Calder. But um, there's a few guys there. Joe Bravo, I think came in Paco Lopez. Uh, Edgar Zayas was riding at the time and Edgar Prado was there. And it, it was great for me. Uh, I learned a lot riding with them, uh, riding the two different tracks, turf, dirt. It, it, it was a lot at first, but I had some great guys to help me along the way. And my valet down in Florida, Jay Glass, he was a tremendous amount of help. Well, they've helped you along. I mean, this career already exceptional. Your career earnings over 82 million. That is that salty. That I mean, come on, right? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's awesome. And just this year, you've already amassed uh, close to 15 million. Incredible. You have been knocking at the door in terms of getting that first Breeders' Cup win. You've been very close. Uh, going back to 2018, you were second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint aboard Chelsea Cloisters. Uh, you got a second place, of course, in the Breeders' Cup Mile aboard Got Stormy. We're going to talk about her in a minute. Uh, third aboard uh, Don, the, the, Don the Destroyer in the Breeders' Cup Philly Mirror Sprint back in 2019. You were also second on Hot Rod Charlie. That was that move that everyone was like, whoa, where's this horse coming from? Oh, and, it was, yeah. It was it, impressive move that day. <laughs> oh, the TBG Juvenile. I'm going to ask you about him too, even though I I know he, it, it's Pratt that's riding him, but still, I, I want insight on this horse because I have a question regarding him. Um, okay. Do we have uh, any horses we're looking at for you in terms of the classic? Uh, we were in talks with a couple horses, but uh, I haven't heard anything back from my agent at the moment. Okay, well, since you don't have anybody set just yet, I think it's fair to get some, you know, you can handicap it instead for me right now, at least. Right. So as far as Hot, Char Hot Rod Charlie goes, so it looks like this is a horse that's shown a couple different dimensions. And since you have been aboard him, the one thing I have noticed with him in particular is he looks so powerful when he moves. It's almost like um, he's so strong and he has such momentum when he's got that propulsion going forward that he can kind of get in his own way. And that's maybe why we've seen a few of the little bit of infractions going on. What is your take? Uh, he's a very strong, very forward, powerful horse. Like you said, uh, you hit it on the head there. But the one race that I rode him in the Breeders' Cup, uh, they have a couple different views, but there's one that the Breeders' Cup put up and it's kind of like overhead, but it's down the backside and you can see him grab the bit maybe about the four and a half. And that's when he gave me that feeling and he kind of took off from there. And a couple of times I actually had to slow him down around the turn because I was worried about making the lead too early. Oh. But, uh, he, he's a very strong, powerful horse. And I can only imagine coming into his three-year-old season, how much bigger and stronger he got. 
Right. And you, you've been a, you've been aboard some very powerful horses, very athletic horses. Of course, you won the Preakness Stakes aboard a, a big fan favorite in War of Will. But now let's talk about your girl talking about Got Stormy. Uh, you know, it's kind of, it, you know, you've got this long relationship with her now and what a tremendous talent she has proven to be and an honest horse. She's been in the money in 20 of 31 starts, 12 of those victories. Uh, I, she's won the four star day twice. I know you finally did get that first four star day. If you weren't aboard, you had a prior riding commitment, but you did get it this year with her. Uh, how meaningful was that for you? I mean, we know the obvious, but was, was there any, does it go any deeper? I, it, it was really special, you know. Uh, we were a little skeptical bringing her back this year. She had a good start uh, off the bench at, down at Gulfstream, but we. We just didn't really know where she was, but when she got up to Saratoga, she really started to blossom and got back into form or what we believe is her form. And she, she was just working great and uh, something about up there, but to get the four started with her, uh, it, it was amazing. Uh, having all the owners there, Mark was there, his wife, it, it, it was a great moment. And the walk back was pretty special getting to share it with her. Yeah. I mean, I know after that, she goes in the turf sprint there at Kentucky Downs, but I, I don't know if you know this, but it's got that undulating turf course. <laughs> that's what the old, that's the word, right? That should be a drinking game all its own. Just watch. Well, you can't participate because we're <laughs> right on race day, but <laughs> undulating turf course. I it on Twitter. Right? But so, I mean, even though it was a six for long race, it does feel a lot longer when you have yes. the dips, right? It does. Yeah. And, and so how do you feel she's coming into the Breeders' Cup mile? Uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't ride her the best way last time. Uh, I kind of had her crowded, and that's not the way she likes to be. She likes to get back there by herself and relax. But she, uh, just the way the race played out, I was never able to get her in a comfortable position. And I think it cost us. But I worked her, I believe, last Sunday. And it was my first time being on her since. And she... It was the best work she's had on the dirt for me. Wow, that's awesome to hear. And I, again, not just a fan favorite horse for just the the the, the fortitude she's shown on track. You know, again, the longevity of the career, and of course, people get a kick out of it when they see the the mares beat up on the boys. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and, and so I, and also you've got that big uh, ownership group because. She's owned in part by my racehorse along with Spendthrift Farm. So has that been really neat for you to see all the, you know, the my racehorse fans come out and watch their girl? Oh, yeah, it's great because uh, they came up to Saratoga for the four star day. Then they came to Kentucky Downs. So I've gotten to know quite a few of them. And uh, it's just it's great that they put together the partnership so more people can enjoy these kind of moments. Well, I think a big moment we're going to see at the Breeders' Cup, and I don't, I don't believe, I listen, I'm not superstitious, so I don't believe I'm jinxing anything here. I think for sure you get a, a Breeders' Cup victory with Averly Jane. Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. I think Wesley Ward gets yet another win in that race. She's, I mean, this Philly, four for four. She's beat the boys multiple times. You beat them in the Skidmore, even though it had come off the turf. And then, in fact, though, she gets on the turf for the first time uh, in the Indian Summer Stakes there at Keeneland. Sets a new, tra uh, new stakes record. And, I mean, she just blew the doors off yet again. I mean, <laughs> this Philly is freaky talented. What can you tell us about her? She's a rocket ship. Uh... I haven't been on too many as quick as her, especially out of the gate. Her first two, three strides are insane. <laughs> <laughs> you got to grab main and hold on. But uh, no, she, she's a quality filly. Uh, she, each race, she seems to be getting better. She's calmed down in the paddock and the post race. She's real collected in within herself. So I think that's why we're seeing her finish off her runs a little more. And uh, I think Wesley's done a great job with her developing her. And uh, I love him. Originally, we were going to run her in the Alcibiades, but uh, he made a late audible and decided to go in the try the turf with the sprint, and she loved every bit of it. Really? That's interesting. Oh, my goodness. So he, he thinks this is a filly that not only, obviously, because she's already won on uh, the main track, she's on a fast track, because when it came off of the Skidmore, the track was still labeled as fast. Um, uh, so here's the question. So he thinks she can even stretch that far. Oh, yes, because uh, 
the thing is she's really fast, but she's very kind. She comes right back to you and she doesn't really take much of a hold. Uh, if you see in the races, most of the time I have her on a long hold and I just kind of pick her up from there, but she's a very smart filly and she's well capable of big, bigger things. I think. Wow. Okay. That's super exciting then. Okay. Well, like I said, I, she just looks I, all things considered <laughs> to definitely be the one to be. And I would be surprised uh, if she doesn't come through. Now I do know that the blinkers came off in that last start. Uh, so do you, are we going to stick with that? I, um, I love Wesley inside all that. Uh, <laughs> he, he knows this, this job a little better than me. So he's, she's in good hands with him. <laughs> well, okay. Um, you gave me another segue. Good hands. Like, so yeah, uh, there has been an exchange onto a hand, I believe. And I forgot to put my rings on. I'm just at home right now. So I don't wear them. <laughs> but, but big congratulations officially, since this is the first time I've gotten to speak with you on your engagement to the beautiful Cassie Edwards. Uh, she's part of team E5 racing. So I, isn't it incredible what racing has done? I mean, this has been basically, you've been around horses all your life and now it's led you to your future wife. I swear, I was thinking this the other day. Uh, we we were hanging out down in Lexington. We have a couple off the track thoroughbreds. So we were hanging out with them. She likes to do the jumping and stuff. So she supports me. So I support her. But um, we went out and I was thinking, racing has been so good to me. I'm, I'm so blessed. Uh, not only do I have a great career and get to do what I love every day, but I've gotten to meet Cassie, her family. I, I mean, I gained the love of my life and another family from racing. So it's pretty special to think about. Well, this has been so special for us because it's people like you who make us, the fans, feel like family. So thank you, Tyler. We are wishing you best at Breeders' Cup thank and uh, we'll be looking forward to more. Thank you so much. Thank it was you great so talking much. to you. It's great talking to you too, Tyler.